Hi, I wanted to talk about this uh, recent incident with a, a fatality, the first fatality involving an autonomous car. In this case, it's an autonomous Uber car in uh, Tempe, Arizona in the US. And unfortunately, there was a fatality. Someone was crossing the road and they got hit by this autonomous Uber car. There was a driver behind the wheel, but they weren't in control of the car at the time. It was in fully autonomous mode, apparently. and it's the first accident of its kind and it could have uh, wide reaching ramifications for, well, at least the near term future of autonomous cars. So I thought it's important to have a look at it and uh, talk about it. And the Tempe police have just released the footage from inside the car of the accident. They just released it like an hour ago, which um, really raises an interesting point because before this, it was just all speculation about, well, did the person just dash out in front or whatever? Could the autonomous car, should it have detected this and avoided it? And I'll show the footage uh, shortly, but let's have a look at the original uh, news report from this, shall we? BBC 15, big questions about this early morning crash in Tempe. A bicyclist seriously hurt in a crash with a self-driving Uber vehicle on Mill Avenue near Curry. We don't know right now whether there was a human driver at the controls at the time of the crash or not. We also don't know the condition of the bicyclist. It appears the injuries are serious. Tempe PD just letting us know that Mill Avenue has reopened. This is just north of Tempe Town Lake. Now, unfortunately, as I said, the uh, pedestrian did actually die in this uh, incident and there's a huge investigation into this. So I'm sure that, you know, the full details will eventually come out. But it was very interesting that very soon after the incident, the uh, Tempe police chief came out and says an early probe shows there were no it, there was actually no fault by Uber, from viewing the videos, it is very clear it would have been difficult to avoid this collision in any kind of mode, autonomous or human driven, based on how she came from the shadows right into the roadway, Moore, who's the police chief, said. Um, they have not released the video, but now they have just an hour ago, and we're able to uh, take a look at this to see how bad it is. Now, of course, autonomous cars, they shouldn't just have visual based uh, systems because as they said there if they come out of the shadows you can't see them uh, this is uh, very typical of uh, pedestrian uh, and other you know animal accidents and things like that when you're driving at night they jump out of the shadows and slam you know you don't have time to uh, see them come in or to um, stop but of course autonomous cars are expected to be better than this they are expected to have you know lidar based uh, radar type uh, systems that are supposed to you know ping out in front of the car in all or in all directions uh, essentially and know where objects and other things are they shouldn't just rely on visual aids and here's the actual uh, Volvo we're talking about, the Uber one here with their, this is Uber's own uh, driverless uh, package. It's not actually a Volvo uh, thing. It, it's got a top mounted uh, LiDAR unit, provides 360 degree, uh, three dimensional scan of the environment. So that's actually a rotating laser that spins around and then they receive the data from that. They can build up a LiDAR map image of that uh, a forward facing camera way to focus on both close and far field watching for braking vehicles crossing pedestrians traffic lights and signage so like the problem with just if you just designed an autonomous car that used optical like camera only based uh, systems they're just not as good as the eye there's a lot of stuff that goes into the technicalities of this but generally the dynamic range of the eye is better it's much better up at picking uh you know low light you know little glints and movements and other um stuff than especially a video camera uh based system but of course it needs that's why this uber car has all these other sensor packages as well like this 360 degree radar coverage so not only lidar but radar as well where those sensors are i don't know but they're kind of showing them on the front here um a roof mounted gps of course side and rear faces and cameras working collaboration uh to construct a continuous view of the vehicles surrounding so it's seven cameras um one laser inertial measurement units custom compute and data storage 360 degree radar coverage something obviously went wrong there with the algorithm or whatever this stuff has more than enough technical capability to see somebody pushing a bike in front of the car unfortunately something went wrong 
Now, from the news footage, I've been able to determine the exact location where this happened. It was just over the Tempe Town Lake here, um, just past this overhead bridge, right about here on North Mill Avenue, just before East Curry, uh, the intersection with East Curry Road here. And if we actually go in and have a look at the street view down here, we can see... Um, as you'll see in the footage very shortly, there's a lamp post right here. This lamp post here provides a light coming across where the pedestrian comes out of the uh, shadow here. So the impact happened like just right about here and the bike ended up some way up here um, just past this uh, blue sign here with the palm trees as you'll be able to uh, see in that uh, news footage before. So the bike ended up here the impact was down there. And what's actually sad about this is this is actually a bike lane going along here. There you go. And further up here, the person could have actually uh, crossed up at the lights up here. It is a long way, but hey, look, let's not put blame on anyone for crossing anywhere or doing whatever. We're just talking about the technicalities of the, um, should the self-driving car have actually detected uh, the person crossing uh, across like this in this case with their uh, bike going across the road but with the lasers and the lidar and the radar and everything else as, along with the uh, 20 cameras on the car should it have been able to detect such a simple thing as something coming across in front. First, let's take a look at Uber's uh, self-driving car. The one involved in the accident and the modern ones that they're using are a Volvo uh, XC90, I believe. They started out using a uh, Ford Focus uh, test cars like this, but have a look here. The cars themselves were packed with around 20 cameras, seven lasers, GPS, radar, and LiDAR technology that measures the distance reached by outgoing lasers so cars can see and interpret the action around them. So. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got everything that should be required to detect somebody walking in front, even if they're coming out of the shadows, as the police uh, chief said. And as we'll see in the video, this is certainly the case. Um, a human probably would not have been able to uh, avoid this accident, I suspect, based on the footage, which you'll see shortly. But it, it certainly had everything there that should have done the business so and it was the car has been determined it was in full autonomous mode at the time so it looks like um based on this it with all that technology something went wrong unfortunately and it should be noted that the one in the actual actual accident look it's got the uh the scanning it looks like the, that's probably the scanning laser on top plus the cameras and everything else so it's got that full uh, car width sensor package actually going across there so it looks a bit more uh, streamlined than you know it's just like the package on the front so it's obviously like a newer one than the full-on one that they actually had in these uh, early prototypes so they seem to have like uh, improved that but um, it should have the full sensor suite in there now, I'm going to point out this interesting article that I uh, found, and I will link it in uh, down below. It is a year old, from March 24, 2017, uh, and it's from uh, Recode. Um, inside Uber's self-driving car mess. Apparently, I won't go through the whole thing, but of course, Uber's future pretty much depends on uh, self-driving cars because they're not doing very well financially. They know the future self-driving cars, and if they can get the drivers out of the loop and have a fully autonomous service, it's going to probably have a much better uh, return for them. So they're betting big time on autonomous cars, as they probably should. Um, no one blames them for that. But anyway, apparently, uh, like a year ago, granted, this was a year ago they've had, they said here that the company's uh, autonomous efforts are in turmoil according to exclusive interviews they had with current and former and current employees of their self-driving uh, unit, which they got, uh, they bought a truck, self-driving truck company called Otto, and that's where um, a good lot of the talent uh, came from. Uh, but turmoil, uh, internal tension among its executive leadership, granted this was a year ago, uh, issues a wave of key talent departures and problematic demos. At least 20 of the company's engineers have quit since November. That would have been 2016 at the time. Um, anyway, I, I, I'll link it in down below and you can read it uh, for yourself and make up your own mind in uh, terms of that. But yeah, it wasn't looking good back then, their autonomous car division. They did have issues. So here we go, let's take a look at the footage. The Tempe Police Department have uh, just released this. It is public and I, I have actually uh, taken this footage. It's done as two separate footages, one from the dash 
cam looking uh, presumably the dash cam looking forward or is it the cameras one of the cameras up on the top i'm not sure but anyway it's looking forward out of the car and there's the other one looking back in at the driver as well and what i've done is actually taken this footage i've inlaid the driver with the front forward looking dash cam footage i've tried to line them up as much as possible uh the police uh chief said that actually the first time the uh, driver knew about it was when the impact actually happened so that's when I've uh, synced it up so um, uh, warning um, some viewers may find the footage disturbing so as you can clearly see here um, basically the pedestrian uh, walking their bike going across the road did actually come out of the shadows there and granted this is a very common way that accidents happened uh, at night pedestrian animal accidents and th things like that especially here in australia you know kangaroo jumps across the road they come out of the shadows there's almost no way to see them and respond in time so even if there was a driver uh like behind the wheel actually uh, it, they may not have been able to prevent this accident um unfortunately but that's not where to, what we're discussing here it's like should this autonomous car have actually detected this with all its um sensors and really looking at this footage i've got to say i mean this is a classic case it wasn't just a person it was a person with a bike so you know it, it was like a <laughs> that's a pretty big target to miss i would say um so you've got a i guess uh question and once again not necessarily putting blame on uber here or their uh technology but let's look at this a person was walking straight across autonomous cars as i said i think we expect better from these because of all the sensor fusion technology the later the lasers the uh lidar the radar and the 20 cameras on this thing uh, granted, I don't think the cameras could have actually picked up that, but the, I can't see how the uh, LiDAR or other systems should not have picked this up. So do they have an issue with their sensor fusion technology and stuff like that? Granted, these are still essentially prototypes that they got out there uh, uh, driving around on these uh, roads. So, um, uh, like, I don't think the driver could have actually um, seen uh the pedestrian coming out of the shadows here i so yeah i i can't see how you can necessarily blame the driver uh in this case but as you can see he was actually distracted probably maybe looking at a mobile phone or uh something like that um but in this case uh, the sensors really should have picked that up i think so um that's a like a classic case of something walking in front of a car and that's a reasonably big target so anyway um there you go that's the footage let me know what you think uh should this uber self-driving car have picked this up do they do you know about this all this sensor fusion technology have you got any further technical details on exactly how the uber system work and and actually fuses all these different sensors together does it process them separately does it do fuse them together and then do it based on the final output of that um please leave it in the comments and as always EV blog forum down below but if you want my opinion on these uh, self-driving cars and a lot of people have asked and we've discussed it on the amp hour uh, a few times all the talk in the last couple of years is fully autonomous cars are only a couple of years away like that's what everyone was saying and even before this accident I was saying no way that they aren't even close to being able to do what humans can do um yes in limited circumstances geo-fenced areas with fully mapped modes but they I, I can't see how the technology at this stage can detect uh stuff that humans can detect just basic stuff in a like a big city like sydney uh different work zones and contra flows and you know lollipop people will stand there the stop go and like all the like let alone uh navigating car parks and navigating uh you know things like that looking for parking spots and stuff like that you know can the cameras see other human faces over there and see them walking towards their car they're walking towards their car looks like they're going to leave you know i i can wait for a spot there and and things like that how like there's, there's countless different scenarios um i can think of and ones i can't think of that if you've got them put them in down below where current autonomous technology no matter how good it is um is not going to be able to replace humans anytime soon um except in specific you know 
uh, you know, narrow sort of uh, circumstances. So it's a very interesting question, this autonomous car thing. It's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to happen uh, on as large a scale and as soon as people think. <laughs> Comments down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.